Hey everyone, welcome to a supplemental episode of Story Now. Um, I just wanted to add some thoughts to my uh, previous review of Catching Fire, which if you've not seen, first go and see it, it's an excellent film, and second you should probably stop watching because this is going to be very spoilery. I'll give you a couple seconds to click off if, if you've not seen it. Um, yeah, that, that, that should be good enough. So uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, uh, basically the, the, the scheme within the, within the story uh, that Plutarch Heavensby had and just, just how, how brilliant it was. Um, now, I'm not, I'm not the, the brightest of, of viewers or readers. In fact, I'd sort of forgotten the plot twist when I went and saw the film, but a lot of uh, what he is is planning and how he sort of manipulates the games in, in, in to work out exactly as he wanted is is really subtly explained. And so, at, at least I think when you watch it the first time, uh, it only leaves you with a slight feeling of something being off. But when you go back, you realize just how much he manipulated events in order to help uh, bring about the the escape at the end of the end of the film uh and he basically does this by helping the tributes out in three ways the first is that he gives everyone the tools that they need uh right off the bat everyone everyone is proficient with with a weapon as they show and all of those weapons are present there in the cornucopia now while this arguably was the case in the last film remember in the last film the cornucopia was set up as a bloodbath and so Immediately on going there, nine tributes were executed. Here it was set up so there were short paths so people couldn't stay there very long. And so the, and the weapons were laid out pretty much in front of, of whoever was there. So in the end, everyone was pretty much able to get what they needed. Aside from that, uh, there was also the wire that uh, B BD needed at the end of the film, which clearly would not have been there in a normal film, but somehow it was in a normal competition, but was provided to him within the cornucopia. And there's there's the lightning. Um, as you know, the lightning played a key part in the end when it was used to take down the force field. And it was actually rather cre clever that uh, one of the hazards was a, a constant repeating uh, lightning strike that was that you could you know literally set your watch by that that you know came at noon at midnight every day uh and given that otherwise it would have been incredibly hard for them to escape that was that was brilliant and and, and how it was disguised as a hazard and as something that was sort of ominously marking the the time it, it, it was really cool the second great thing was that by setting up the arena to have such brutal hazards um, a complete lack of, of fresh water or proper resources, uh, he was able to, to force the team together, especially those who weren't in on it, like uh, Katniss or Joanna, who were much more inclined to be cynical and who wanted to basically play the game. Uh, by, by, by constantly attacking them with, with, uh, you know, with the fog and the wave and the monkeys and the birds... Uh, he he forced them to focus more on fighting the arena than uh, fighting each other. Now, while I said in the previous review this was very interesting in that it showed more of a battle against the capital, it's also rather clever from a, from a, a in universe perspective that it was designed to to keep them essentially off each other's backs, and and uh, it also helped justify to people watching, especially to uh, President Snow why such a large alliance would exist. Uh, in the previous game, most most alliances were temporary in between, you know, two or three people. And the largest pack was, was I think, about four people who were all tributes. And that, that, that was immediately immediately ended by, you know, the, the first 20, 30 minutes that we were watching the games. This, this large group was, was also able to hide because of that. And thirdly, he was he was able to provide motivation uh, in an especially clever sequence with the birds in the woods, the Jabberjays, who were basically repeating the the cries of the their significant you know friends and family and whatnot, 
as they were being tortured. It, it, it reminded them of what stakes they had at home. And it also sort of reinforced that the capital is the enemy. And uh, that also, that, that, that comes right at the point when, when they're, starting to, they're starting to turn on each other. Katniss especially is starting to think that she might be better off on her own. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. It, it, it was, it's, again, I'm sure more clever viewers probably got this all in the beginning, but I'm, I'm a little slow that way. And I thought it would be nice to, to talk about this because even from a, from a storytelling perspective, it is rather, it is rather difficult to have, have a character, uh, pull a switch at the end of the film and for it to both feel kind of surprising and make sense on a second viewing. Uh, that that really does make for the best uh, best twist, and I thought it would be interesting to look at that. Um, so so that's it for for this supplemental episode. I will shortly be posting uh, a new episode. Uh, I think maybe in an hour uh, on Thor two and why that's a film that ages very poorly. Uh, bye.